The date is Saturday the 3rd of June and this is my confession. I'm a serial bonsai killer. I've killed before, I'll kill again. I must be stopped. So this story starts with me wanting to learn how to use copper wire. And I had never used copper wire before. Reasons for that is firstly that it's pretty expensive. Secondly, my trees in Australia, they were mostly in a not very refined state. So I was doing pretty heavy and crude bends and it didn't seem worth it to buy copper wire just to do big ugly bends. In Korea, the story is the same. I don't have very many or any refined conifers in Korea. Also, I've never really managed to find anywhere in Korea that sells copper wire specifically for bonsai. But it seemed like a skill I should have. And I found a place here in Korea that sells copper wire. And when it came, it didn't look like the copper bonsai wire I'd seen. It didn't appear to be annealed. It didn't have that burned quality to it. So I looked up how to anneal copper wire and I found out that apparently all you need to do is heat it until it's red hot. So I tried to do that on my gas stove. And after that it looked like proper bonsai wire, but I didn't notice any particular difference in its flexibility. It seemed about the same. I decided not to bother with burning it all on my gas stove. I realized here too, I don't have any trees that need copper wire. I actually only had two conifers. One of them was my Christmas pine and it's all wired up with aluminium wire that can stay on there for probably another six months. And the other was like a, an abortion. This terrible juniper I bought it only had really short branches and I tried to wire that one up into something resembling a bonsai and it was kind of a disaster. So that one's just been put aside and left to grow out. So I decided I needed some new conifers to practice my copper bonsai wiring techniques. I had to go to my most and least favorite Korean online bonsai shop. So this place, everything they ever send me is like from the island of misfit toys. We're all misfits! This was the place where I bought the Korean horn beam that was super twisty and had the big bulge of inverse taper on it. And actually that tree is doing pretty well. It's starting to look quite nice. If I can ever successfully air layer it, it will be an interesting tree. But everything I've ever bought from them has some critical, critical flaw for its use as bonsai. There was a pine I bought from them once and it had a really straight trunk and halfway up the trunk was this golf ball sized lump of inverse taper. There was the super twisty Korean horn beam. There was that juniper I bought from them that had really short branches. And I understand where they're coming from. They're a real bonsai shop. They make their own bonsai and they sell bonsai in that shop. And so when they get an internet order from some random foreigner in the southern part of Korea, they don't send their best piece of stock. They send the thing that they think, oh God, I don't know what anybody could ever do with that, but here you go, foreigner bonsai guy, try your hand at this one. The plants are always healthy and, you know, no pest problems, anything like that. They're just misfit bonsai. Hey, we're all misfits too. So I went and looked at what they had for sale at the moment, and I found something really interesting. What they had were these, small Kishu junipers and they're in these little tiny eight centimeter pots but they are only seventeen dollars each and they looked a few years old and I thought this is the perfect thing for me for practicing my copper bonsai wiring skills with uh, thin gauges of copper wire so I thought it was a good deal so I ordered two of them Cool. Well, that's better than I expected. Well, I got a surprise when they came because instead of being tiny little things in eight centimeter pots, 
they were pretty substantial trees. So that was exciting. I think I worked out what happened with that because I went back and checked again after I ordered it and the $17 mini Kishu junipers were, were gone. So I think they got the order in. They either didn't have any left or these were those same ones, but the listing was from a couple of years ago. So I guess I got good service from them. They could have canceled the order, but instead they sent me these substantial Kishu junipers. So I was pretty happy. And I looked at them and one of them I thought was pretty simple. I just needed to have the top bent over, this main branch lowered, and I thought it would make a, a kind of basic but traditional little juniper bonsai that everybody loves. So I thought I'd use that one to make a short. And the other one I was a bit more interesting, so I thought I'd keep that one and try to do something interesting with it. So I decided to make a short with this little juniper I had, the easy one. And it was at this point that everything went completely wrong for me. Because not only did I decide to learn how to use copper bonsai wire on camera, I also decided I wanted to make the greatest YouTube short of all time with stop motion animation and macro photography and all my manual lenses. So I set myself up to do this and almost immediately I encountered disaster. Because this tree had, a, it had an old wire scar going up the trunk. Nothing too bothersome, but I thought this would be an interesting chance for me to make a shari going up the trunk. And I don't know what happened if when they wired the trunk originally they did a loop or something or maybe I just screwed up but I started going up the trunk and suddenly I realized that instead of making a spiral my line was about to do a full circle and essentially ring bark the tree. So I made a sudden shift of direction trying to slip the shari line back up like that and it looked terrible and in the end there was about two millimeters of live vein left for to keep the tree alive but actually I thought it would be okay. I did something like this once before with a juniper and not only did it not suffer at all but it actually pretty much just barked over the shari line eventually. I think I left some cambium, so it didn't present any problems for the juniper. So I thought it would be okay, and I continued with wiring up this juniper and dragging down these branches in stop-motion animation. Uh, let's take a look at it over here. Okay, so here is my shari disaster. Now I'm using my clever stop-motion animation techniques to bring down this branch. And the end result, I thought, was kind of a nice-looking little tree. But YouTube hated it. Absolutely hated it. I got more dislikes on that one short than I've got on my entire channel up until now. So that was a little blow to my ego, although on the plus side, YouTube seemed very happy with it. It showed it to a whole bunch of people. And I got angry about that. I thought, ah, what do you know, YouTube? Bunch of smug people. But I do know there's a lot of people that just don't like the aesthetics of a heavily wired bonsai tree. And I can sort of understand that. It's kind of a confronting image. So maybe that's why people disliked it. Or maybe the YouTube bonsai community is just a lot smarter than I am and took a look at my hideous shari job and thought, wow, man, you just killed that tree which, as it turned out, was 100% correct. I completely killed the tree. Now here's the interesting thing. I've always heard about junipers that, oh, they can be dead for months before you would even know it. They can look fine, but they've been dead for a really long time. And it's, a, it's one of those slightly counterintuitive statements that you hear and you think, oh, yeah, okay, that sounds right, that's interesting. It's like hearing that the Great Wall of China is the only man-made object that you can see from space. Sounds good. Interesting fact, so you repeat it to other people, but if you stop and think about it, you think, well, that doesn't really make a lot of sense. I mean, the Great Wall of China is not very wide, for one thing. It's just long, so why would that be the thing you can see from space? And I think the same thing might be true for that statement about junipers being dead for months. But it's kind of a hard thing to disprove. But I've disproved it because 
My juniper bonsai did not stay alive looking for months. It looked dead within about five days. So that's my lesson for today. The statement that junipers can be dead for months before you would even notice it, I don't believe that's true because I killed one in five days. See ya. I mean, it does still have a tiny little bit of green on it, but yeah, I think it's dead. Still got its brother to do, but at the moment I'm a bit hesitant. My confidence is dented, so I think I'll just let it grow for a while.